Okay, welcome back. And our guest is um, Group Captain uh, Garba, Sadiq Garba Shehu, uh, retired. He's a former spokesman of the Nigeria Air Force. And we're speaking about um, the retirement of um, um, a, a large number of uh, military officers. In fact, uh, the way it is put technically is that um, all graduates of the um, NDA, Nigeria Defense Academy, regular courses, uh, 38, 37, 36, and below um, are affected uh, by this. So, um, uh, Group Captain, you're with us. Can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you, but please raise your voice a bit, not too much. Uh, okay. I was saying that this thing affects, this exercise affects the members of the, um, what, 38th, 37th, 36th, and below uh, regular courses of the Nigerian Defense Academy in the first instance, right? There are no taxes regular course. Taxes regular course, all of them are gone in the last purge. There was a similar purge uh, 2022 when the last set of services were appointed. Okay. So those taxes course and remnants of taxes course, they were purged in a similar manner. So taxes course are not affected this time around. What we have are 37 course uh, and 38 course. These are the ones that are affected right now. Okay. The, um, and, no, and none below that? Not below that. Not below that. Anyway, yes, technically there are some below that. You see, in the military, we are talking, the, the, I mean, the most junior sub, I mean, uh, service chiefs now is 39 course member. That is the, the, the chief of uh, army staff and the chief of uh, air staff. So they are members of 39 regular course. However, it is possible for you to find a 37 regular course or a 38 regular course who has lost promotion along the way. When you lose promotion, you go below to the next course that is below to you. So technically, it's possible to find some people in 37, but who have lost a year or two years seniority, but now so they are running seniority with that regular course. But in this part, as I understand it, after looking at the list, what the service chiefs did was to look at anybody who entered the military before me. I tell him as my senior, as such, he will not serve, he will go. That is what happened. Okay. And that is the convention, is it, within the military around the world? Good. A very good question. Your earlier guest, before I lost, uh, you know, the audio with you, and many others have been putting this problem simply that it is a tradition, it's a culture. With due respect, I would like to slightly, uh, you know, disagree. Yes, military is a profession of seniority. We have this saying among us that once I enter the military before you, I am your senior for life. It doesn't matter if along the way, through military, snake and ladders, I could lose seniority and go below you, official seniority. But the fact that I entered the military, I will still hold that against, I mean, I hold that that you were my general because I entered before you. However, the problem we have is that, with due respect, culture and tradition is not law. What does law say about the length of service of an officer? We have what we call the harmonized uh, terms and conditions of service for officers. We still have also for the non-commissioned officer. When the officer, when they have another terms and condition of service, when that which an officer is commissioned, you know, it guarantees him to serve a maximum years of 35 years service, just like civil service. That's what it guarantees him. It also guarantees him, if he rises to the highest rank, to serve up to 60 years of service. I hope you are getting me. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it, it gives him that guarantee. But again, within that 35 days of service, there is another second condition. This one, you can find it in the uh, Harmonized Service and Condition of Service section 03.10. It specifically talks about, uh, you know, the, the terms and service, I mean, uh, the length of service for officers. So an officer enters with the understanding all things being equal to serve 35 years or 60 years. However, within the ranks, again, for every rank from captain, major, lieutenant, colonel, there is a maximum age that an officer is allowed to reach. If he doesn't get promotion to the next rank, it means he's out. Now, for the officers we are talking about, people that are major generals, uh, rear admirals, and uh, 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 air vice marshals, what the head staff guarantees them is that they will serve up to age of 60. I hope you are hearing me. Yes, we can now, hear you. Looking at all the people that are retired, I, well, I know them collectively, but individually, I will put their average age around 55, 56. 
how did you get to Sunday 57? So let me talk the upper limit 57. Even if you take the most senior of them, which is about 57 years, it means under the head tackle, he has three years remaining of his service. He has not also served those 35 years from the time he left uh, the Nigerian Defense Academy. So you see, here we have a clash of what did the book say versus what people are dismissing as it is, uh, you know, I've, I've talked about the issue of... Uh, uh, tradition or custom of the military, my senior is my senior for life. But that is not what the book contains. The book, as of now, this is the lacuna we have to address. Did not address what happens to me when my junior by entry is made service chief. Right now, we have that lacuna. So, with due respect, when this thing first happened last year, when some 70 to 100 also left last year as a result of the appointment of the last service chiefs, I think we slept on the, on, the, on, the, on the steering. That was the time for the military to understand that there's a big problem here, and it is likely to occur. I'm still this lacuna illegal, because with due respect, it is not just enough to say it is tradition. When you say it is tradition, it means the officer affected has the option of either accepting that tradition or not accepting it. More so, because if we check back again, we've had similar incidents like that, but not in this large number where a service chief still had his seniors that served in the military. I can remember vividly uh, from uh, 2015 up to 2018, uh, during the last, the, 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 the ultimate set of service chiefs, that is Oloni Shakin, uh, General Buratai, uh, Air Marshal Sadiq, and uh, Iba. During their time when they came in, you know, the, 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 the line is second floor, who is the most junior service chief? As of that time, the most junior service chief was Lieutenant General Borate was of 29 calls. But if I recall vividly, there were members of 28 or 27 regular calls that were serving within the armed forces. Within the armed forces. So you see, there has been a precedent, even when we say there's a tradition. So my, my, my point of view is that tradition is there, but tradition makes it optional. Because I can tell you, as a matter of fact, right now there are some of these officers for various reasons, and I don't blame them. There are some who would not mind to remain and serve with these people and complete their 35 years or 60 years of age. They wouldn't mind at all. But military officers are disciplined. They would not like to raise their voice, but I am telling you, I know that for a fact. Okay. So the point I'm making, we should shift from the position that it is tradition, it is culture. This thing is likely to occur. This is the second time we are having this large number. It is likely to occur in the next future. So the solution is not just to stay and say it is tradition, it is culture, document it. Right now, we do not have a solution what happens to those officers. That is officially. There yeah. is no official position. I hope I'm very clear. Indeed you are. Uh, so th this makes it yeah. look, this, th this sounds to me like there is, some, th there is a need for some kind of reform uh, within the military as it relates to um, these, these kind of matters so that things don't get, quote unquote, out of hand, um, as it would appear that this is now uh, the case. Exactly. It's a problem that needs solution. Even if you go back to the ones that left in 2022, they are, I can say they are my contemporaries, there are some who feel that the, the, the system was not fair to them because they will show you this is what the terms and conditions of service says. I should serve for 35 years or to a certain age and I have not reached. But at the same time, I want us to understand something. There is the prerogative of the commander in chief. Okay. What the, uh, the, the, the section on the, on, on the constitution, which talks, I think it's section 18, which talks about the appointment of service. It gives the president to appoint the phrase, whom he deems fit. Who he deems fit. Now, who he deems fit, it means the president is not obliged to ask who is the most senior so that I'll appoint him. It is completely within his, uh, you know, his, his, his prerogative to go whether to the middle of the rank or even down, and then pick his service chiefs, which means then we'll come back to talking about uh, this tradition, which is not based on book. So yeah. the point is that the military as an institution in their personnel management uh, uh, modem, what I wanted to, to bring personnel management uh, practices, they should factor in this fact that the president has the prerogative to pick anybody. And find a solution, what if the president, like in this case, picks somebody and that person has seniors? To be honest, it's not enough to tell somebody that it is tradition, it is custom. In fact, if you see the letter, with due respect, the letter written to the people to leave, nobody quoted any provision that you are going under this uh, provision. It made the reference to 
custom and tradition, discipline, and hierarchy, but I will continue to say custom and tradition is not law. On the other hand, other ministries have found, you see, the ministry, the ministry is, an, is, is, a, is an international, you know, uh, uh, profession. All ministries, they borrow practices from each other. How did other ministries solve this thing, including the U.S. military, the German military? I have conducted a research on this thing. Okay. What do they have? They recognize the right of the president to pick anybody, irrespective of seniority. You get to be his service chief. No constitution that I know tied the hand of the president that he must pick, because to avoid this problem, unless if you are going to force the president that he must pick the most senior, he is not obliged to do that. But what did other militaries do? They brought two options. If my junior is made service chief, and I have two years or three years to either reach that 35 years or 60 years of age, I have two options. What is the option? I could decide on my own to leave. And in that case, what they do is that they will calculate the remaining months or the remaining years of my pay and give me. On the other hand, other militaries, what do they do? They say, okay, you still have five years. They have appointed your junior as a service chief. If you want to stay and continue your service, you stay and continue your service and complete your year. These are the two options. I am not preferring one over the other. Mm. But the point I'm making is that there is a solution to the problem. We document it and we choose any of these two options. However, military traditions also differ. If that thing we are saying tradition or culture, we want to make it a law, we may, that's a third option, we may say, look, for Nigerian military, once they appoint your junior, you have to go. But I am telling you here, that for now, there is nowhere where that is reaching. Okay. So it, we just need to... In the harmonized terms and condition of study. It's Indeed. not there. Indeed. Thank you very much, um, um, Group Captain Retired. Um, so from what you're saying, um, in fact, uh, it's, it, I think you said it, it did somewhere else that this isn't an issue of the president, uh, as sorry, you please, said. You're, you're, I'm not hearing you very well. Please raise your voice. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me right now? Is it better? I can hear you, yes. Okay. Yes, You've indicated that um, it's not even about the um, uh, president, it's more with the military, because as you've just explained, um, the president technically can choose whoever he wants. Not that he's likely to exactly. do it, but, but if the president wanted, he exactly. could have chosen a colonel, for example, you know, theoretically speaking. And, um, theoretically. Yes. Theoretically it's possible. Yes. So, because, uh, again, please let me come on here. What other, what other countries did? Here, I, 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 you know, the, the U.S. military, they have probably the longest history of practice. They have made their mistake. So whether we like it or not, even though I can be challenged with Nigeria, it's not America, you still have to go to the America. What Indeed. the American Congress did? Now, in saying the president has the right to nominate somebody, they mentioned among serving generals. Indeed. They mentioned among serving generals. In our own case, uh, Section 18 of the Constitution, it didn't even specify the rank of who the president can choose. So that's why I say technically or literally, it means the president can opt for a, for a corner. But of course, that will cause a lot, cause a lot of confusion. Okay. Well, th thank, thank you very much, uh, Group Captain uh, Richard, for explaining, you know, the, uh, the way it works in there and uh, what the constraints are. One thing that uh, quite, just about everybody who has called in uh, on this program, on this issue, it was, um, you know, they're wanting them to get a fair shake. That is, all their entitlements, all their dues, uh, let it be paid to them. And I, I, perhaps I was a bit flippant, but I had said that um, I, most, most, of us in, most of us ordinary civilians would take that as a given, that um, they would get their retirement dues. In fact, there have been some news stories about some, quote-unquote, fabulous, uh, fabulous retirement packages uh, for some. Your comments? Well, uh, there's different, you know, I thought I was here. Retirement, anybody who retires, especially a military man, even civilians, they enjoy their retirement. Of course, they have their retirement, they have their pension and their benefit. But on that time, I spoke about for those whose career was caught, I could say for service exigencies, it is necessary to document that the remaining months or the remaining years they have is computed and they are paid for it. Because they have a guarantee in the hedge tackle they are supposed to serve up to a certain text. In all honesty, we are people, as, uh, as people who study military systems, I just play in my mind game. I say, well, supposing one officer now challenges this retirement, based in the uh, terms and condition of service, I don't think it will be a, 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 I mean, a vexatious case. You will have a point there. 
But I am not, it's not likely that any officer will do that. So we do that. Retirement benefits, they are entitled to it. I have seen the list of uh, retirement benefits that say people are, are going to get well. I didn't reach that rank. And to be honest with you, I don't know what, what is involved. But having said that, I always emphasize that for somebody who has served the military for 30 years plus and gotten to the rank of general, you know, uh, putting his life online to protect all citizens, I think there is no amount of money that will give him that will say we are fully compensated him. Indeed. He should be given all that the country can afford for the service they have done. However, in return for that, the military, where I said the fault is the military, the military ought to produce only officers of that rank that are really necessary, that can be supported by the national economy. So this is where it, it is a job from two hands, and not only from two hands, uh, the National Assembly is not, uh, you know, innocent in this, in this, in this, uh, in this something. Because the National Assemblies in other countries, to be honest with you, it is National Assemblies that specify the terms and conditions of service of military officers, the amount of pay, you know, the, the condition for, 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 for promotion, they are the ones who do that. Unfortunately, our own National Assembly, there's this tendency on military matters or defense matters for them to think that, look, it is really not our problem, it's the commander, especially at a time when we had a commander-in-chief who was a former military man. I want this wrong idea to be taken out of the head of the 10th National Assembly. If they think there is wrong, and we think everything is wrong, retiring 103 uh, uh, major generals when they have not reached the age, I think is a loss to the country. We must find a legal solution. We must move away from dismissing it that it is, uh, it is a tradition, it is a culture. I told you I am still within the military I speak with them. There are many who feel they are shot down by this kind of system. And to be honest, it is not there. Let us look. So I always, whenever I criticize or I critique, let me use the word critique, it is always due to recommendations. For the incoming government, definitely from 2022, which we saw massive retirement, and then this one, we have to agree there is a problem. So the incoming government must look at that harmonized terms and condition of service. You, you mean specifically? Well, when you, when you, uh, sorry, uh, when you speak about incoming government, th th there's a government that has just yes. arrived. Yes, yes, that's what I mean. Oh, the the, the, the okay. present the, gov the present the government. government. Yes, the present government. That's what I mean. Okay. Uh, thanks for your correction. The present government should realize because this what this what this happened, Yori, is likely to happen again. Because it has happened before. When it has happened before. So it is becoming a recurring decimal. What it means, we must have solution. And like I told you, and I emphasize everywhere, right now we don't have a legal or policy solution to this problem. All what people are saying, I have to be very honest with you, both military and non-military is personal opinion. Your last guest was saying they should know that their time is over. They appoint their decision. Well, like I said, that ought to be optional. We've had, again, I have on society, we have, part, we have had in the past where seniors have stayed while they, are, while they are genius as service chiefs. So the solution is not just to say it is tradition. The solution is to go back to that harmonized terms and condition of service, review it, and particularly decide when an officer, uh, his junior is appointed service chief, what does the system do for him? Should we allow him to serve out his time? Mm -hmm. Should we pay him for his remaining time? Should he be given the option to do whatever he wants? And related to this, finally, please, related to this, there's also the issue of the tenure of service chiefs. With due respect, if you keep service chiefs beyond three years without changing them, <laughs> you are going to have traffic hold up in the general's line. <laughs> you are going to have traffic. We well, have refused to legislate or to also put a policy on what is the tenure of service chiefs. We have left it elastic, subject to different interpretations, so much so that I can tell you now, nobody can tell you what is the tenure of a service chief in Nigeria. All right. The Mulonga service chief stay without change, you are going to have a glut of generals. All so right. again, this is something that we must address. Indeed. In my study of other militaries, almost all militaries, they appoint their service chiefs for a particular tenure. Well. For a particular tenure. When you raise this issue here, some people will tell you, no, you cannot interfere with the right of the prayer. No. That is not what democracy says. Or, that democracy, as we copied it, there is nowhere where the president has unchallenged or unlimited power. Because I will, for, for just drama, I could say, if President Tinubu wants now, he has appointed the service chief. The way, we, the way we are looking at, he could serve with them for the four years. 
if by chance he, because he has a second term another four years, he could still serve with them with four years, according to the books we have. If another president comes after Tinibu's eight years, if he lasts, he can still return them. This is a possibility with what we have on the book. And you can imagine what will happen if you keep a set of services for, say, 12 years. But it is a possibility in the system we are operating now. So, good Captain, thank you very much. This is so explanatory. It, 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 it really does make it clear. And also you've mopped up some um, uh, misspeaks, if not uh, outright mistakes, about three uh, you know, thousand generals. That is not as many as that. But everything you've said is pointing, in my mind, uh, towards the need for reforms, especially around these areas that are sort of, quote-unquote, gray uh, that you've spoken about. I want to thank you very much, uh, uh, Group Captain uh, Sadiq Garbashe, who retired uh, for the enlightenment uh, this morning. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Lonnie. But please permit me just one sentence. Okay. Um, almost all these issues, almost all these, I want to bring it to the attention of the government, almost all these issues were discussed at a, at, a, at, a, at a military reform committee that was set up by the last government. Almost all these issues, it was seen. Even as of that 2021-2022, the list of generals on that list, as of that time, was taken, and the whole committee members were unanimous that the number was too much. Okay. That thank you very much. More, we got to go there, now. There should be more, more screen. Yes, we really you. appreciate you and your time this morning, Group Captain Garba uh, Sadiq Shehu, retired. Defense and uh, security counterterrorism expert. So.